Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Hively Avenue Mennonite Church. Uh, we're going to begin our time with a call to worship, which is printed in the bulletin. So I'll take the leader part if you take the people part. And then we'll finish all together. The Lord reigns. Let the people tremble. The Lord is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion and is high above all peoples. Let them confess your name, which is great and awesome. You are the Holy One. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before the footstool of God. The Lord is the Holy One, Moses and Aaron among your priests, and Samuel among those who call your, upon your name. They called upon you, O Lord, and you answered them. You spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept your testimonies and the decree that you gave to them. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and worship upon the holy hill of God, for the Lord our God is the Holy One. Please join me for a word of prayer. Almighty sovereign and lover of justice, we thank you for gathering us here this morning and pray that you would be present with us. You would be present to bring us justice and to form us into a people who see and take our responsibility for doing justice and being a people of peace seriously. We ask this in the name of Jesus, through your spirit. Amen. Hillary Harder will lead us in song this morning. I invite us to stand if we're able and sing number four in Voices Together. Number four, Christ is our cornerstone. And please remain standing and turn to number 131. Praise, I will praise you, Lord.
in this congregation are connected in various ways to Guatemala. And uh, if it hasn't been at the top of the news in recent weeks because of uh, even more horrifying realities in the Middle East, but uh, essentially in August, uh, Bernardo Arevalo was elected president on an anti-corruption platform, and the government that he was running against, the corrupt government, has attempted to claim that he is not he did not win and he shouldn't be allowed to take office, uh, which led to Arevalo's largely indigenous supporters to flood the capital and who have been camping out uh, in recent weeks, proclaiming uh, the need for justice, for integrity in government, for genuine democracy, and doing so uh, as well as they call for peace. Some, one of my students actually, Mari Martinez Cruz and her husband Ben, um, who are assembly Mennonite. Um, she is a Guatemalan Mennonite and he was a missionary there. They have just gone there this week to have conversations with Arevalo and other figures to try to broker some kind of peace. So Guatemalan Mennonites are involved here and need our prayers. So please join me as uh, we recite the litany printed in your bulletin as I light the peace candle. The confession this morning is uh, in Voices Together 893. And I'll take the light prints if you read the bold print. For failing to love others as you have loved us, God of grace, forgive us. And I'll pause just briefly after the little dots. For wasting your gifts and hoarding our goods. God of grace. For plundering the earth and abusing the planet. God of grace, forgive us. For fearing those who are strange to us and ignoring those in need. God of grace, forgive us. For losing heart and abandoning hope. God of grace, forgive us for all the ways we turn from you. God of grace, forgive us. We offer our prayers in the name of the one who saves us, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please turn to number 206 in Voices Together, and I'll invite the singing group up to help. This is a bit of an unfamiliar song, so they'll help sing it and join in when you feel ready.
We welcome the children. Judy Roth will lead the children's time. know what the job of a scarecrow is? Yeah, it's in the name, right? To scare crows. And so the enemy of the scarecrow is the crow, and the enemy of the crow is the scarecrow. <coughs> Does anybody know what Jesus tells us to do to our enemies? That's right. Love your enemies. So uh, this is a story about a scarecrow, and we'll see how he does. The Scarecrow, written by Beth Ferry and illustrated by the Fan Brothers. Autumn sunshine, haystacks rolled. Scarecrow guards the fields of gold. No one enters. No one dares. Scarecrow stands alone and scares the fox and deer, the mice and crows. It's all he does. It's all he knows. He never rests. He never bends. He's never had a single friend. For all the woodland creatures know not to mess with old Scarecrow. Winter whispers. Velvet snow. Scarecrow has no place to go. He dreams of what the spring will bring, of buds and blooms and things that sing. Then something drops from midair, a small scared crow lying there. Broken nest, broken wing. Scarecrow does the strangest thing. He snaps his pole bends down low, saves the tiny baby crow. He tucks him near his heart of hay. He lets him sleep. He lets him stay. He doesn't stop to wonder why. He sings the sweetest lullaby. Safe and warm, the nestling mends. These two make the oddest friends, but friends they are right from the start. The crow will grow in Scarecrow's heart. And he will peek out at the farm, and he will perch on Scarecrow's arm. And they will laugh and wish on stars, forgetting who they really are. For crows are birds, and birds must fly. The fledgling spreads his wings to try. He dips, then soars, and cause out loud, Scarecrow cheers, pleased and proud. But as he watches, Scarecrow knows that he must stay, and Crow must go. Summer sunshine. Autumn chill. Snowflakes made it, make it colder still. No one visits, no one cares. Scarecrow sags alone and stares. Broken heart, broken pole, nothing fills the empty hole. Then something drops from midair, a large black crow standing there. Scarecrow's arms are open wide. Crow spreads his wings and swoops inside. Joyful hearts, brimming whole. A friend will mend a broken pole, and he will spruce up matted hay, and he will say, I'm here to stay. Winter's over, springtime's too. Is there room enough for two? Flowers blooming, fields of green. 
Five small eggs are tucked unseen. Where do you think those eggs are? Baby crows. Okay, right in here. Yeah. Scarecrow guards them, for he knows that soon they will be baby crows. And he will love them from the start. And they will grow up in his heart. And they will peep and perch and play and make him happy every day. And as the seasons come and go, they will love their dear scarecrow. And all the animals are enjoying time with Scarecrow. Okay, let's talk to God for just one second. Dear God, help us to learn how to love our enemies. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The sermon text this morning is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. I'm going to be reading that in English and Susan Openga in Swahili. And, yes. Okay, so from 1 Thessalonians 1. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak of it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols, to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead. Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is to come. This is the word of the Lord. I'll be reading in Swahili. Paulo na Siluano na Timotheo kwa kanisa la Thessalonike lililo katika katika Mungu Baba na katika Bwana Yesu Kristo neema na iwe kwenu na amani. Tuamshukuru Mungu siku zote kwa ajili yenu nyote tukiwataja tuki katika maombi yetu wala atuachi ku, atuachi kukumbuka kazi yenu ya imani na taabu yenu ya upendo na kwa saburi yenu ya tumaini lililo katika Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo mbele za Mungu baba yetu kwa maana ndugu mnaopendwa na Mungu twajua uteule wenu ya kwamba injili yenu haikuafikia katika maneno tu bali katika nguvu na katika Roho Mtakatifu na, ka, na kwa uthibitifu mwingi na kama vile mnavyojua jinsi zilivyokuwa tabia zenu kwenu kwa ajili yenu nanyi mkawa wafuasi wetu na wa Bwana mkiisha kulipokea neno katika dhiki nyingi pamoja na furaha na roho mtakatifu hata mkawa kielelezo kwa watu wote wa aminio katika Makedonia na katika Akaya 
maana kutoka kwenu neno la Mungu limevuma si, kati, si katika Makedonia na Akaya tu ila ila na kila mahali amani yenu mlionayo kwa Mungu imeenea hata hatua hatuna haja sisi kuene, kunena lolote kwa kuwa wao wenyewe wanatangaza habari zenu jinsi kulivyokuwa kuingia kwenu na jinsi mlivyo mgeukia Mungu mkaziacha sanamu ili kumtumikia Mungu aliye hai na kweli na kumngojea mwanae kutoka mbinguni ambaye alimfu, alimfufua katika wafu naye ni Yesu mwenyewe hatuokoa na dhambi na ghadhabu itakayo kukuja thank you pastor pratik bag will come and preach a sermon titled god's chosen people welcome pratik and we pray that god would bless you and uh, look forward to hearing the words god's put on your heart thank you thank you so much Thank you so much, Amy, and uh, all the leaders of the worship service today, this morning, for the hymn singing and for the wonderful music and for everything. I am so grateful to God. And it is wonderful once again to see you all this morning to come together and worship the living God. As I deliver this message, I pray that the, the Lord may bless all of us. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to bless us? Dear God, we come to your presence this morning. And we are thankful to you for giving us this opportunity and for showing us this beautiful day when we can come together, O oh Lord, in this nice weather and just worship you and remind ourselves that we are your people. And this time is for you, O oh Lord, that we may just remember you and forget about everything else. And today, especially as now we are going to listen to your word, Help all of us to learn from your word, speak through me, Lord, and make this sermon a blessing to me and to all of us. In Jesus' mighty, precious name we pray. Amen. The story is told about a pastor who got to the pulpit and he started speaking and he had a band-aid on his face and he said to the church, I apologize for having this band-aid on my face because uh, while I was shaving, I was still thinking about the sermon. Later on, after the service ended, the treasurer was kind of collecting all the money and, and kind of, uh, yeah, going through everything that was there in the, in, the, in the money bag, in the collection, in the offering bag, and he found a note. And that note was, uh, was for the pastor. And that said, next time, please remember your face and cut down the sermon. <laughs> now, I'm not that pastor, though. But the message that I'm going to preach is very crucial, and I, I assure you that it is going to be a short sermon. So let us, let us pay attention. There are two passages that are chosen for this morning. One is Psalm 99 that we used for the responsive reading for this morning for call to worship, Psalm 99. And the second passage that has been chosen or that was read to us is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1 to 10. And if you see that, it seems like both of the texts talks about two different things, but there is one particular theme, one phrase that brings them together. And for me, that was very critical. And that one phrase is God's chosen people. And that's the topic of today's sermon, God's chosen people. Psalm 99 talks about the chosen people of God in the Old Testament where God relates with his people in a very unique way. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1 to 10, we hear about another relationship that has been formed due to what Jesus has done on the cross. These are the people of the new covenant who have received the gospel in their life, and now they are also a chosen people of God. Now, whether we talk about the chosen people of the Old Testament or we talk about the chosen people of the New Testament, being chosen 
people of God is a very prestigious status, but also one that comes with enormous responsibility. Enormous responsibility. In Genesis, we find that God chose Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, he called him and he said, he promised, he gave a covenant to Abraham that I'm going to bless you and I will bless your descendants and through that a nation will be formed. And this nation is going to bless all the other nations of this world. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 9. And here I'm reading just two verses to get the gist of uh, Abrahamic covenant here. Verses 2 and 3, where God says to Abraham, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. I, uh, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. Then he says, and all people of, or on earth will be blessed through you. All the people on earth will be blessed through you. The NRSV translation says, And in you, all the families of this earth will be blessed. The KJV version also says, And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And it, it looks so different to me when instead of uh, calling it all people or all nations, when I see it as all families of this earth, it makes a difference to me. It seems like it's talking about something very close, something relatable, something that talks about my own family. So this blessing that God is giving to Abraham is a blessing of a global family, that every single family in this world is going to be blessed by the family of Abraham. And how was it fulfilled? We believe that it was fulfilled in the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and all that the Lord has accomplished through his life, death, ministry, and resurrection. When you read Matthew chapter 1, where we read about the genealogy of Jesus, you read from Matthew chapter 1, verse 2 to 16. First, it starts with Abraham, and it says, Abraham was the father of Isaac. Coming down to verse 16, where it says, Jacob was the father of Joseph. Joseph was the husband of Mary. Mary was the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Who is called the Messiah. And what does this Messiah mean in Hebrew? Mashiach, if I didn't pronounce it well, please check with Jamie because I checked with him just to make sure that I'm pronouncing it correctly. I will not pronounce it second time though. I might do a mistake because he just did a thumbs up, so I did a good job. He was the anointed one. And you can, it can also mean that he was the chosen one of God, a chosen one of God. Who is this? Jesus Christ himself. So Jesus is coming from the family of Abraham, and he is blessing all the families of this earth. Yeshua, the Messiah. The chosen people of God, when we talk about the chosen people of God or the chosen, uh, chosen nation, Israel, it is started with just choosing of one man, that was Abraham. The question comes, what could be the reason of his choosing or his election? When you read the Bible, I was just trying to see what does the Bible say about Abraham? How did he look? What was his personality? When we think about Abraham, what comes to your mind? Maybe some of the movies that you have watched or maybe uh, some books that you have written, children's book, like handsome man, Abraham. No great looking guy. I don't know how he looked. The Bible does not talk about how Abraham looked. It talks about Saul. It talks about David. Those were the kings that they were tall, handsome, good looking people, wise people. But it doesn't talk about Abraham that well. But it talks about one aspect of Abraham's life that is so critical if one calls himself or herself a chosen one of God or God's chosen people. And that 
is faith. That is faith. We find that when God calls Abraham, he leaves everything and he follows, he follows God. It is believed that he was from a nation that did not serve God, did not worship God. In fact, he could have been an idol worshiper and also maybe idol maker himself. But he chose to follow the Lord. And it is difficult for a person who is coming from a different faith to Christianity, it is entirely different. I have not experienced that. But when I see the testimony of my grandfather and when I see many other testimonies in the world where people have chosen to leave a faith and come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, it is huge. It is like starting a life afresh from scratch. It is difficult. We find that he was also willing to give away his only son. So his son was the key to unlock all the blessings of his future. But when God says that you have to sacrifice him, he was willing to sacrifice his only son, who was the key to unlock all his blessings. He did not choose to rationalize why God is wrong by demanding such a thing, but he just believed and walked by faith. So faith is the key aspect or a defining factor of a chosen people of God. And what makes one person part of the chosen group is not by calling ourselves as chosen, but when we live our lives as the chosen one, as the anointed one, as the Messiah. Michael Settler, he made a very significant comment, which is very appropriate here. He said, true Christianity or true Christians are those who carry out Christ's doctrine in their lives. Who carry out Christ's doctrine in their life. We are the people who walk how Jesus walked in this world. And Paul emphasized this again and again to the churches how through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are living a new life in Jesus and we have become the chosen people of God. We have become the household of Abraham in Jesus Christ. So he talks about in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 4, Paul affirms the Thessalonian church. For we know, brothers and sisters, you are loved by God and that he has chosen you. Further on, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 10, he says, Once you were not the people, but now you are the people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. That is not it. In Romans, I think many a times, Paul talks about being chosen by God. And finally, I would like to uh, mention another scripture portion, that is Galatians chapter 3, verse 7 to 9, where Paul says, Understand then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. It means we are the chosen people of God. All nations will be blessed through you. So those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. In my childhood, when I used to read the Bible and when I used to read about Israel, what came to my mind was uh, the nation Israel that I, hear, that I used to hear about, which was reborn or rebirthed in uh, 1948. I always wanted and I still would like to go to Israel one day, just to see the Jordan River, just to see that place, that beautiful place where Messiah, uh, Jesus himself walked, the place where he lived. He ministered, he died, and he's re resurrected. But regardless of when that happens, it feels so sad to me when I hear all the things that are happening in Israel today. When we see the, the crisis that is going on in the nation of Israel, I hold fast to the words of assurance we find in the Bible that calls us to hope for peace for all nations. If you read Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3 to 4, it says, it talks about the last days. It says, many people will come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many people. 
nation will not take up sword against nation nor they will train for war any more what a wonderful wonderful state that would be a condition that would be as chosen ones of god we are called to pray for peace in all the land because we echo what is there in the heart of god as chosen ones we are called to pray there are at least three things that god's chosen ones are called to do number 1 god's chosen ones represent the characteristics of god the greek word chosen here that is used in thessalonians 1:4 it means chosen or election or it can also mean hand picked and, and a, a good example that comes to my mind is uh, the blueberry picking that we went to uh, a, a few weeks back and honestly we were just choosing the bigger ones that are more juicy and sweet and uh, we took almost a bucket and you won't believe like within a day we finished the whole bucket it was so so good we didn't go the second time because we knew that we we'll, i don't know how much that made us healthy but when we talk about hand picking we choose something that is good that is beautiful and all of us who are sitting here we have been chosen just like that good and beautiful juicy and nice that gives pleasure to god when he sees each one of us secondly god's chosen one discerned the will of god in dire conditions like what we are facing today pandemic war injustice i was uh, last sunday i attended the uh, the presentation on human trafficking uh and it was and i open up for me because i didn't know that when we hear about human trafficking and other things that are happening around this country sometimes we don't realize that it is happening in our own state but our eyes are closed sometimes we don't even see that there are many people who are trafficked even here whether we are talking about sex trafficking or we are talking about something else people from this small small towns and and villages they are taken to the big cities and they are being used over there injustice misuse of human beings is happening in our country and everywhere else in the world we learn and we seek god's guidance to respond appropriately thirdly god's chosen ones or god's own people uh, they are always ready to minister to others in all conditions in all conditions we are ready to serve other people if we for a second just uh, just in a, in our imagination if we just uh, 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 see that there is no walls around us see that there is no building around us and if you see all the churches all the people just like that without seeing ourselves under this boundary of a building i think we will have a very different picture of what church is because just by sitting in this church we think that okay this is the church of god this this is it highly avenue mennonite church beautiful but once you tear down the the walls you will see the whole world and the vast the vast ministry that we have and, and 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 the great empire or great kingdom of god and the the many churches that are there and all the different organizations that are working for peace and justice in the world we all are one working together maybe we are doing a small piece but there are others too who are doing great things for god as well just as we are doing we see the need of each other and we see the the need of this world in a very massive way when we just bring the walls down and we see a very different picture sometimes our life becomes so narrowly focused on our own selves that we forget that we are god's chosen ones and he has got our back our condition is sometimes like the man who fell off a cliff but managed to grab a tree branch on the on the way down and following this conversation takes place he says is anyone up there i am here says the lord do you believe me he says yes lord i believe i really believe but i can't hang on much longer that's all right if you really believe you have nothing to worry about i will save you just let go of the branch a moment of pause then again the man 
cries out, Is anyone else up there? <laughs> As God's chosen ones, we are called to rely on God and reflect His love as much as possible. It can happen to us that we may think that we have already done a lot. I think I have done enough, no more. God must be happy with my efforts or the achievements thus far. I can't take it anymore. But if you check properly, you will always find notifications from God that it is not done yet. You can never be retired of this mission, right? It is not done yet. It is not done yet. I'm regularly getting an email over the last few days that says, buy some more space for your Gmail account. Otherwise, it will cease or you will not be able to get more emails. Have you, have you ever received that kind of... That, that's weird. So I need to buy it, basically. Or I need to really sit down and delete the things that I do not want. Then I will find that I have enough of a space to get new insights, to do more things uh, that I want to do. And I think it, it, it helps me to understand what we are called to do as God's people as well. There are two things we can do to delete the things that we do not want, to make free up some space, we can still do that. Or we can sit down in the presence of God and ask the Lord, Lord, renew my strength, as your word says. And God promises that he will renew our strength. To get ourselves ready to face our day and reflect God as the chosen people, we need to free out some space. Uh, looking at the negatives or violence that are happening, uh, knowing that in the end only good will remain is very, very important for us. What is going to remain at the end? Good. So focusing on good is so, so important. But if we are unable to do so, let's go to God and ask to renew our strength. It feels great to be part of a group that is significant, that is powerful, that can make a difference in the society and surrounding. Everybody wants to be part of that group. If there is a political party, we would like to be part of that because they are significant, powerful people. But nobody wants to be part of an insignificant group that does not have a voice. And sometimes their voice is not heard, but we are called to be that voice. Even though we keep on shouting, and it might seem like we are so tired of talking about peace now, so tired about talking about justice, because we are talking about peace here, there is somebody roaming around there with a gun killing five people. How much more can we talk about peace? But God has called us to be that minority group, to be that powerless and insignificant group, because we know that we are walking in the way of Christ. And at the end, this will remain. The way of Christ, by desiring peace and justice in the world, is what we are called to do. If I have to point out just one thing, being a person from India, if I have to point out one thing that Anabaptist Mennonites have got thoroughly right, as representatives of God, I will say that it is our stance for peace. It is our stance for peace. Being God's chosen ones, let us work hard and pray for the peace of God to prevail here on earth as it is in heaven. May the Lord bless all of us and help us as chosen ones of God to bring peace in this world. Amen. In response, let's sing number 719 in Voices Together, 719.
This is the time for all of us as God's people to share and pray together. And I request you all to please take this opportunity to share if you would like to say something to the church.